since you hit play on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. I want to make sure that you know that our free self-love challenge is happening in February 2024 right here on the podcast. The goal of this challenge is to make creating an intentional practice of self-love even easier than ever simply by plugging in your earbuds and listening for about 10 minutes per day. But for the full experience, you're going to want to get the scorecard so you can enter the giveaways, get the daily journal prompt sent to your inbox and join us for the live wrap up podcast recording. Yes, you get to join me in the studio and record the podcast together live. It is all free. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge to sign up again. It is completely free. You'll get a daily reminder with the free 10 minute coaching each day and your journal prompt and you will see a transformation over these 14 days. It is not only going to impact your relationship with yourself, but as I'll teach during the challenge, it is going to impact every single other relationship you have in your life, your relationship with other people, your relationship with teaching. That energy is going to impact every single other aspect of your life. So sign up at wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge. It's free. Now let's get to the episode. You are listening to episode number 83 of Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast, the number one teaching tips from the experts, part two, the parent track. We are back for more amazing teaching tips today. And in part two, we have tips geared towards parents and teachers. So let's dive in. Welcome to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. I'm Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher and current homeschool mom. And even though I've been a resource creator since 2014, I've realized that printables alone aren't all you need in order to thrive as a teacher or homeschool parent. That's why I also created this show and got certified as a life coach to help you finally kick burnout to the curb and feel confident with whatever challenges come your way. With the right mindset strategies and new teaching inspiration, you're going to be well on your way to your best teacher life. Now, let's go. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is part two of our segment of the absolute top tips from the experts on teaching. All of the experts who I'm sharing today are either experts in homeschooling or something that could be useful to either homeschool parents and teachers. They are in our parent track. And I'm really excited about the parent track this year because last year we had a lot of presenters and there were some who were like homeschooling parents or where they were applicable to parents too, but we definitely had more teacher speakers. This year it is pretty even Stevens. Like we've got a lot of teacher presenters. Like if you're a teacher and you're not a parent, don't feel like, oh, this event isn't for me because it totally is. We have like lots for just teachers, but we also have so much for the parents too. And I know so many in the community are both teachers and parents. So you are not limited to only one or the other. You get to listen to whatever you want in this event with your ticket during the time that you have access. So it's really exciting. And I hope you enjoyed part one of this. If you missed it, you can listen to this one first. Like it's not like you have to listen to one first and then the other, but be sure to go back and listen to part one as well. And in case you didn't hear the first one, I'm gonna share a little bit about how this works. I shared a little bit more on that one, but basically we got these video clips and we're using the audio obviously of just the very top tip from these experts. Like if they just had one thing to share, just a few minutes to share with you, what is it they would share? And they brought it to us. They have some incredible tips that are going to help you today. And the first episode was focused on speakers on the teacher track. And this one is more focused on the parent track from Educate and Rejuvenate because all of the experts today are speakers at Educate and Rejuvenate. I think I should have mentioned that at <laughs> first. I'm not sure if I did, but all of them are speakers at our summer event, Educate and Rejuvenate, but I wanted to bring them here on the podcast today so everybody can learn from them, whether or not you choose to purchase a ticket. And it can maybe even help you make your decision of, are these people I want to listen to? Are they people who I want to attend their sessions? Because if so, then you'll want to grab a ticket, right? And so again, it's not about me today. It is about our amazing guest experts. So I'm going to stop talking and let them do the talking. Let's dive in. 
So I'm Diane, and I help parents, teachers, and other professionals better understand and support hyperlexic learners. The thing is, most people have never heard of hyperlexia before, which, if you haven't, I'm not surprised, but it refers to a precocious self-taught ability to read that's accompanied by difficulties with language, comprehension, and social communication. So when my child was first identified, I discovered there wasn't much information about it out there. So it's been my mission to help change that. And I use my blog and Next Comes L to share resources, printables, tips, and activity ideas that will better support hyperlexic learners. With hyperlexic learners, they can read and they are extremely fascinating with the printed word. So one of the best things you can do to support hyperlexic learners, either at home or in the classroom, is to write things down and make it visual. Think checklists, visual schedules, written instructions, social stories, those kinds of things. There are a couple sayings in the hyperlexia community that kind of emphasize this point. One is, when in doubt, write it out. And the other is, write, 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 because the hyperlexic child will read, read, read. So if you're looking for a quick strategy or tip to kind of support a hyperlexic learner, the best thing you can do is just write things down. So if you're at all curious about what hyperlexia is, or you have an early precocious reader yourself, and you're kind of thinking, hey, I might have a hyperlexic learner, or if you're just, you know, you're familiar with hyperlexia, and you'd like to know more about how to support these types of learners, both at home and in the classroom, then definitely join me for my session about supporting hyperlexic learners. We're going to talk more about what hyperlexia is, some of the early signs, especially in the toddler and preschool years. And then we're going to talk about some of the strategies and tips that you can use to make sure that your hyperlexic learner is well supported both at home and in the classroom. So come check it out. Now, if you'd like to learn more about hyperlexia and you want to connect with me, you can find me at nextcomesl.com or I'm and next comes L on all social media. Instagram is usually where you can find me the most. So come join me there. Um, I also have a free hyperlexia handbook that you can download right from my website. Again, that's nxcomesl.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Marnie Ginsberg. I am a mom to three girls and a literacy consultant who started reading Simplified after many years of being frustrated with the inability to disseminate information about how teachers and parents can get students reading rapidly. So Reading Simplified is a streamlined system for teaching anyone how to read, whether beginner or struggling, that is for teachers or parents. And we provide lots of complimentary resources and videos and worksheets for just a handful of activities that, that are in alignment with the science, but are really high leverage. And we also provide ongoing training inside our Reading Simplified Academy to learn our full system. But I hope parents and teachers can at least dabble in a little bit of our complimentary resources at readingsimplified.com. Parents or teachers who have kids that are beginning to read or who are struggling to read are almost always on the lookout for what's the Op most optimal way to get those kids reading and re reading well and fluently and off to enjoying a lifetime of reading. And as the science of reading movement has gained a lot of popularity, many teachers, especially and some parents are turning to the research to find out how we could optimize our kids reading development. One secret that I'm going to be sharing in our upcoming workshop called Three Secrets of Science of Reading Superheroes has to do with the integration of multiple subskills. What does that mean? Well, a lot of phonics programs are helpful as we transition away from programs that are less effective, but they also incorporate a lot of things in isolation. So a little bit of letter sound, letter name knowledge over here, letter sound knowledge over here, phonological awareness, hearing syllables in words, hearing rhymes in uh, words, and later phonemic awareness over here, and later handwriting, and later reading, and later spelling. And all of these components are considered separate, isolated accomplishments that build on one another until you get to real reading or real spelling. And actually, the science has shown us that a building blocks metaphor is less powerful than a, a weaving together of skills. 
And that is more in alignment with the science. When we integrate these skills in the context of real words for reading or spelling or manipulating sounds and words, then kids learn a lot faster. It makes more sense. And we get into real reading more quickly. So I'm excited to share with you this principle and go into it in further depth in this workshop that's coming up, Three Secrets for Science of Reading Superheroes. And I'll be sharing more in depth about one particular activity that we offer at Reading Simplified called Switch It, which really dives into how to get kids to hear sounds and symbols work together in a fun way. Most kids think of it as a game. So I hope that you check out this session and find some ways to accelerate your student or student's reading achievement. There are more reading programs and reading strategies than there are stars in the sky, it may seem. And so a parent or a teacher may feel overwhelmed. What we've done at Reading Simplified is take the research and lots of clinical practice and find ways to streamline all the chaos and all the choices into just a handful of activities that are really high leverage. So I'm going to be sharing some of these key principles that undergird what I've learned after um, two decades of reading instruction, research, and teaching of teachers. And so I'm hopeful that you will attend our Three Secrets of Science of Reading Superheroes workshop to learn these secrets that, that are principles that are, go against the grain of both mainstream phonics and mainstream balanced literacy, so the main approaches that are available to most people right now. So yeah, we're going to teach the kids the phonics, but we can do it in a streamlined way. We can do it in alignment with the science and alignment with how the brain learns to read, co-opting the language system. So I mentioned earlier that we're going to be talking about how when in, you integrate skills, then you get kids into real words faster. And I'm going to show you an activity called Switch It to do this. I'll show you a video example. I'm also going to show you how to get through a lot of complex phonics knowledge in faster time, like the O that can be O as in go or boat or show or toe or note. And we do that through an activity called Sort It, which is easy to understand and implement. So I'll be showing you those two activities and I'll also be challenging you to think about the possibility of, of getting kids to read, not in two or three years, but in three to 12 months, maybe 24 months. What if we change our paradigm instead of thinking about years, instead of think, that we think, think about months, we might have radically different outcomes. So this is going to be a really provocative and challenging session that goes against, as I said, the mainstream but it's very practical and you will see for the, in the videos and even as soon as you test out an activity with your own student, if what I'm saying has veracity or is actually gonna work for you. Hey, check us out to learn more about our streamlined activities at readingsimplified.com. You can find one of our most popular activities at readingsimplified.com forward slash switch dash it or see all of our core activities when you go to blog at Reading Simplified and then our most popular. We'll give you lots of resources to give everything a shot. Hi, I'm Amy Bodkin. I am an autistic adult, a former school psychologist, and I also homeschool both of my children who are also autistic. I most of the time work with homeschool families, but I do also consult with professionals. And I do this with families and professionals around the world, trying to help them figure out what's blocking kids from being able to grow into their best selves. I like to advocate that special needs kids are people too. And that's also the name of my podcast. You can find me at amybodkin.com. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my Facebook group is Special Needs Homeschooling Help with Amy Bodkin EDS. We talk about all kinds of things, not just homeschooling. I have professionals who join. I have families join who were homeschooling and now they're not or were public schooling and now they're homeschooling because life doesn't always stay the same. Just like kids, our lives are always growing and changing, and we have to figure out what's blocking us and how we can get around that. Hi, I'm going to be talking with you guys about dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia, 
oh my, at Educate and Rejuvenate. I'm super excited about the topic because one of the things that holds us back in being able to support children is the way that we diagnose. All of our diagnoses are based on symptoms. So when we are basing our diagnoses on symptoms, we know what the problem is, but that doesn't tell us how to fix it. And that's where we get stuck because we try all of these different things to try and help a kid and we waste a lot of time and money doing it. But if we can figure out what processing problem is the issue, what's blocking this child from making progress, and then we can find the tool that strengthens that processing issue that's weak, or possibly a tool that bypasses the problem if strengthening it's not an option, then that child can make progress and grow. And if we find the right tool, it doesn't take as long. It is the difference between trying to do surgery with an ax and trying to do surgery with a scalpel. I personally would choose the scalpel every single time. I've seen children make years worth of progress in just a few months by figuring out which processing problem is causing the issue. If you wanna find out more about this, you'll have to wait because I can't tell it to you all in just a couple minutes, but that one thought right there is a complete game changer. My session at Educate and Rejuvenate is dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia. Oh my. And we will be talking about all the different processing issues that can block kids from making progress in reading, writing, and math. If you want to learn about what these different processing issues are, how you go about deciding which processing issue to address first if there's more than one, or how do we address a processing issue once we figure out which one it is, then you're going to want to show up at my session. It's going to be a game changer for your classroom, whether your classroom is at home or in a school. It does not matter. It can make years worth of a difference in your students' abilities in reading, writing, and math. Don't forget to join me for the session. You can find me at amybodkin.com. You can also find me on Facebook and on Instagram. My Facebook group is Special Needs Homeschooling Help with Amy Bodkin EDS. I work with both homeschool parents, families, and professionals all over the world. And my podcast is Special Needs Kids Are People Too. Hey, everyone. So I am Jody the mom, and I am here for homeschool moms and parents. I am the rebel mom behind lifeunbox.blog, and that is the place where we talk about all things momtrepreneur, from raising your kids to running a business, and the most important one, keeping your sanity on most days. Here's my tip when it comes to self-care for moms. We tend to think that we need to block out chunks of time. So we have time to go get a massage or a pedicure or something that's going to take hours out of our day. And that is considered self-care. But you only need to set aside 15 minutes of day, 15 minutes a day to have a good self-care routine. Hey there, my name is Anissa Orsino. I write a blog called Mama Goes Beyond, and I am a coach for moms who want to simplify everything, optimize what's left so that they have the time and the energy to have fun with their family, take excellent care of themselves, and share their sparkle with the world. My tip is to stack tasks intelligently. What I mean by this is that we all know multitasking, not a super great idea, leaves us feeling crazy and not accomplishing anything that we're trying to do. But there are things that we can do together. So if you're taking your kids to the playground and they are big enough to be able to not fall off the playground equipment, if you don't have to be on death watch anymore, allow that to be your exercise time too. Let them go on the playground, have their fun. You can walk in a little circle around the playground, keeping an eye on them, but getting your own workout time in. If you need a quiet minute, 
let your kids have quiet time too. Maybe they listen to an audiobook while you take a minute to read your book. Maybe everybody has art time and you actually get a chance to like do a little watercolor painting or a little sketch or a little doodling or something like that while they're doing art. Um, doing yoga together, doing a dance party together. All of these things that are good for your kids are good for you too. And when you're taking advantage of all this, they're getting enrichment, you're getting enrichment, you're getting family time, and it's a super smart way to multitask, <laughs> to knock out a bunch of things at once, but in a way that is enriching rather than depleting. I want to invite you to my presentation, which is all about finding room for yourself in your homeschool day. Uh, while I've geared it specifically towards homeschool moms, I think any mom who is used to sort of putting herself to the side would really enjoy this. We're gonna talk about finding ways to be alone when you're with your kids almost 100% of the time, um, as well as addressing some strategies for making time for your own learning, your own self-care, your own hobbies when your kids are with you all day. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, I hope you'll join me. If you wanna connect with me, you can do so at my website, mamagoesbeyond.com. I also have a podcast called The Optimized Mom. Hi, I'm Sharice Antoinette. I have been a housewife for 10 years, a homeschool mom of six children. I am an author, a curriculum developer, and the owner of My Beautiful Book Boss, The Brand and The Movement. I'm also the producer to the podcast. We teach biblical womanhood to women who want to build their businesses and their lives by the word of God. So if you want to transition to work inside the home, we would love to support you. If you're already a housewife, we want to continue that transition and that transformation. We want our housewives to become homemakers, we also want our stay-at-home moms to become homeschool moms. And if you're a homeschool mom, we want you to become a mompreneur. So we would love to educate, empower, and equip you to be the best woman you possibly can be by raising your family, supporting your husband, building that business, and still maintaining God's relationship in your life and putting him first and glorifying him and last without losing yourself. So that is what we do. We have our resources and our podcast and be on the lookout for a future, um, future promotions like our 12 week program as well as a membership. So thank you for having me. Here's my tip to remember that you are important. What you do is important, who you are is important, and why you're doing what you're doing, it's all important. It's gonna be very interesting when your foot says to your hand, I am not the hand, so therefore I'm not a part of the body. Uh, does it make it not a part of the body? And what about if your entire body was made up of an eye. Where would the hearing be? And if your eye decides to say, I do not need you hand because you're just a hand. When it gets the itching, who's gonna scratch it? So that is my tip and my point that you are important. Yes, there are many different teachers, but there's only one you. And you can only do what you can only do you teach a certain way, your beliefs are a certain way, your story is a certain way. So if you want to learn more about um, just being important and how some of these different areas that may not necessarily be teaching per se has everything to do with teaching, then you want to attend my a session. It's called Recommit to Your School Goals, okay? We're going to recommit to five different areas. Um, I want you to recommit to being intentional, to self-care, to receiving support, to accountability, and to the truth. Because as I laid out before, that just because your foot 
is not a hand and it decides to say, you know what, I'm not important. Sometimes we can feel those things. We may feel like we're not important. We may feel like someone else is not important. We may feel like, oh, I don't need to do that today. There are so many other people. Well, you have got to step into your purpose and your calling and do what you desire to do that thing. And really we're looking at recommitting because sometimes we started teaching for a certain reason and that could have gotten lost along the way. We could have lost our why and our desire and our fire because challenges came. So I want to help you at educate and rejuvenate to recommit. Okay. I'll see you there in my session. I want to invite you to attend my session, recommit to your school year goals. Actually recommit to your school goals because we don't plan on stopping. Okay, so um, we're going to recommit in five different areas. Recommit to being intentional. Why are we doing? What are we doing? Who are we doing it for? Right? Recommit to our self-care. It's going to be very difficult to give out when we're running on empty. Yep. Okay. Recommit to receiving support. Sometimes we just need support. We need help. Um, we don't know what we don't know. And we can learn new things and try something and implement it this way and that way. And it's just going to make a difference in the world. Okay. Uh, recommit to accountability. We need to hold ourselves accountable. If we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. And if we don't, unfortunately, reach those goals, we can have someone else cheer us on. Okay. And the next thing is recommitting to truth. Just because your foot is not a hand and it really feels like it's not important because I'm not the hand doesn't make it true. So I want to help sort through. I want to help you sort through those feelings and those emotions and that way I can help bring those things down and that way you can realize what's true and what's not true. What is really happening and what's in your head? What do you think is happening? So I can't wait to see you at my session. Recommit to school goals and invite a friend too. Another teacher friend. <laughs> You can connect with me at Sharice Antoinette over on YouTube and Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook, My Beautiful Book Boss, and you can download on any listening platform, My Beautiful Book Boss, the podcast. I can't wait to have you join us. See you. Bye. Hey teachers, if you are always on the hunt for engaging math games, purposeful practice, and ways to motivate your students so they can actually enjoy math, you will definitely want to check out digitalmathgames.com. This site offers a growing library of online ad-free games for kids in grades three through six that are self-checking so there's no prep or grading for you. If you are excited about the possibilities, head on over to digitalmathgames.com to get started with a 14-day free trial. That's right, you and your students can test it out for free for two weeks. Just go to digitalmathgames.com to get started. I'm Angela Watson, creator of the 40 Hour Teacher Workweek program. We're kicking off the next cohort of 40 Hour this summer, and I want you to join us. Over 55,000 K 12 educators have already used the 40 Hour program to maximize their contractual hours and stop working endlessly on nights and weekends. Visit 40htw.com to learn more, including how to attend our free online summit on July 9th and 10th, where you can learn time-saving tips from other classroom teachers. That's 40htw.com. Hey there, my name is Bonnie Wiscom. I'm a homeschool mom to 10 kids, an entrepreneur, and a life coach who helps moms prioritize themselves and even start a business if that's something they've been dreaming of. So I'm a huge fan of prioritizing yourself as a mom, especially a homeschool mom or even a busy teacher, because when we don't have enough to give ourselves, we also don't have enough to give our loved ones. So if we want to show up in a better way as a mom and a homeschooler and a teacher and all the ways that we have on our plate, then we need to make sure that we are putting ourselves first so that we have more to give our loved ones. So one of the things I'm going to talk about in my 
uh, session is how creativity is an important part of self-care. I know it's not usually something we think about. We just usually just think about getting in the shower and we don't hardly have time for arts and crafts or anything else creative. But I firmly believe that especially as women, we have a very, very strong sense of creativity, whether it's setting our table at dinner time or creating a, an amazing lesson plan. It doesn't matter what it is. When we are putting our energy into something creative, it really sparks genius inside of us. And so I can't wait to talk to you guys about that in my session because I think it's really going to open up a whole new world to you in self-care that doesn't look like your typical physical or emotional self-care. Now, that is just a small part of what I'm going to be talking about in my session. It's called prioritizing yourself as a homeschool mom, which kind of sounds ironic, right? Because most of us homeschool moms don't seem to have a lot of time to prioritize yourselves, but I'm going to talk about why that's essential. I'm also going to teach you something I call the Pentagon of Personal Priorities. It sounds so funny, but I love that name. It is five ways that you can make sure you're taking care of yourself the best way possible so that you can show up for your kids and your students. So I would love for you guys, if you're interested to come find me online, my website is bonniewiscom.com, or you can find me on Instagram, also at bonniewiscom. I also have a podcast called Burning Brightly, specifically for moms of faith who are interested in building a business. And if that's you and you're also a homeschool mom, I have a special freebie for homeschool moms at bonniewiscom.com slash homeschool on how to start a business even with kids home with you all day long. So hope to see you there. Hi everyone, my name is Marley Rosenberg. I am a former kindergarten teacher now turned stay-at-home mom. Before becoming a stay-at-home mom, I was a kindergarten teacher and an early childhood professional for 10 years. I have a master's in curriculum and instructions and an undergrad in early childhood and elementary instruction. When I was actively teaching, I would make and sell curriculum to other teachers to teach teachers. I've always wanted to be the teacher who teaches teachers how to teach. But now since I am a stay-at-home mom, I use my resources, my knowledge, and my information of everything early childhood to create resources for parents. I create curriculum for parents to use with their preschool age kids. Hi, I'm Marley. I used to teach kindergarten and I have a master's in curriculum. Come with me as we scrutinize this alphabet puzzle set I got for the boys. No, you know that there are 26 letters in the English alphabet, but there are 44 phonemes in our spoken language. The last thing you want as a parent is to give your kids a toy that you think is appropriate, but might actually be confusing them. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing you want to look at when you're looking at resources you are buying for your kids to teach them the beginning sounds of a letter for a pre-reader, pre-kindergartner, you are going to look at the vowels. A E I O and U. And we want to make sure that all the vowel sounds on there are the short vowels. So let's check them out. Here we have two sounds. We have acorn and we have astronaut. Nope, bad. This one is my least favorite and is making me very angry. We have a short E for eh, egg. But then we have E A R for earth, which is actually the U R phoneme. And then I E Y. I'm not talking about it, okay? That makes me angry. Letter I is just as bad. It only has one short vowel sound for the letter I. We have eh, eh, insect. And then we have ivy, ice, and idea. Nope. Bad. The letter O is going to be a little bit harder to scrutinize, but I'm gonna do it. So we have the short sound for O is aw. So we have octopus, otter, on, off, perfect. But then we come to this little guy, orange. O-R is its own different phoneme, and we wanna teach the isolated sounds for each phoneme. Trash, we hate it. Now I know it's very hard to find the correct imagery for the short letter sound of U, uh, uh, umbrella, which isn't even on here. But we have underground, underwear, unicorn, trash. This video is getting too long. Let me know if you wanna know why the letter G is garbage and some other consonants. My session is called, What Does a Kindergarten Teacher Really Want? If you are interested in learning more about what your preschoolers should know before they are entering kindergarten, I'm going to be discussing all of the fun topics, not just the academic side of things like phonemic awareness. The five components of kindergarten readiness that I will be discussing in my session are cognitive development, social and emotional development, language and communication skills, physical development, and approaches to learning. If you are interested in learning more about me and what I post and what I do, you can find me on all of my socials with my name, Marley Rosenberg. Hi, I'm Francini Is This from Francini Is This Coaching, creative of Mom Mental Gym. I'm a life coach for mothers of neurodivergent children like ADHD or autism. I'm also a former school teacher and proud mama of three foster adoptive children. Through one-on-one -on -one coaching and my membership, Mom Mental Gym, I help mothers feel better so they can help their children thrive. As a mama, wife, and life coach, I know life can get hectic. So I would like to share a quick tip for those of us that feel like there's never enough time in a day. Imagine this scenario. You are planning a special meal for your family and you headed to Costco to buy the necessary ingredients. However, you didn't write down the items and before you know it, you find yourself distracted with food tasting, browsing cute outfits, and ultimately leaving the store with everything. 
except the essential ingredients. Just like a chef carefully selects the key ingredients for a delicious recipe, we too must prioritize our tasks and activities based on our values and goals. As a busy mom, wife, and teacher, finding balance and productivity can feel like an impossible feat. But it doesn't have to be. With some mindset shifts and practical productivity tools, you can achieve more peace, joy, and fulfillment in your life. At the Educate Rejuvenate event, I will share with you four ways to have a more balanced and productive life as a mom, teacher, and wife. So here are the four steps I will be covering. Step number one, redefine balance as a dynamic concept that changes with your priorities and values. Number two, identify your values and priorities and let them guide your decisions and actions. Three, assess where you're spending your time and attention. And four, develop effective scheduling practices to create more productivity. So let's get connected. Join me on Facebook at Francinius's Coaching, where I share laughter and support and strategy for moms. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at Mom Mental Gym. Get ready for some daily inspiration. And I have a gift for you. Visit my website, FrancineIstis.com, to grab a free summer survival guide, five steps to have the best summer yet with your children. Thank you for being the incredible moms that you are. Let's make life easier, more engaging, and fun. I hope to see you soon. Hey, it's Cynthia Heron from Inside Our Normal, and I'm here to encourage homeschool families in their journey to homeschool their outside-the-box kids. So outside-the-box kids, what are those? So it's a child that has some different learning needs and needs to learn different, and that's what makes homeschooling so amazing and a great fit for them. So it could be autism, ADHD, learning disabilities, giftedness, anxiety, all those things are a part of our family and my homeschool. And so I want to help you do the best that you can in homeschooling your kids because they need to learn differently. So let's teach them differently. Hey, so one of the best ways that I love to teach outside the box kids is to tear apart different subjects. So when they're trying to do a writing assignment that goes with what they read for history, my goal in that is that they're learning history. We're not trying to work on writing, so that's when I'm very willing to help them write out their assignment because the goal of that project is to learn history, not to write. Now, if we're doing an art project and we're trying to use scissors and markers, yes, my goal may be that I want my kid to practice their scissors. So that's not a part of it that I'm going to help them with, but I might help them color or glue because I want them to practice one skill at a time. And if that's a skill they need to practice, then that's what I want them to use. The rest of the skills I can take apart and offer all the assistance they need to make them feel successful in the activity. Well, I hope you'll come join me in how to teach an outside the box learner at Educate Rejuvenate, where we're going to talk about what it means to homeschool a differently wired learner and someone who just has to learn differently and where we have to adapt and accommodate and how we teach them. But if you're like me, you learn in the public school system. And so how do we teach our kids differently when all we know is a traditional classroom ourselves? So in this session, we're going to explore the different ways that our kids learn and how we can think differently about how to be their teacher, as well as the practical strategies that I've learned along the way and want to share with you so that you can help your outside the box kids thrive. Help you join me. I'd love to connect with you more. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Inside Our Normal and on my website at Inside Our Normal, where you can find all things about homeschooling neurodivergent learners and outside the box kids. Can't wait to see you soon. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the homeschool life coach at CapturingTheCharmLife.com. You can find me on the website writing regularly, but you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, the Patreon support group, and my podcast, all named Homeschool Mama Self-Care. My book, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer, was written in my fruit orchard with the chickens pecking at my red toenails because I want to encourage you. Deschooling has helped me be more present in my life, focus my life on the things that matter the most, 
helps to simplify my life, brings me more freedom, and most definitely helped me individualize my kids' education. The concept of de-schooling actually wasn't even a thing when I started homeschooling, really for many years. I'm a homeschool mom that's been doing this since, oh, I don't know, less than two decades, but my oldest is 22, my youngest is almost 15, and when I started homeschooling, I brought in oodles of ideas from my educational background, which was six years past the conventional grade 12 graduated high school diploma education. So I, like many, had many ideas in what I would do to include different ideas to make it the best educational opportunity for my kids in my homeschool. But really what I did was complicate it, not individualize it, not give myself freedom or my kids, I made it a whole lot more difficult. And frankly, I was lining my ideas against the expectations of what a school might do, and certainly my expectations against what other people thought I should be doing in my homeschool. And all those things were not useful in my homeschool. I learned to let go of a lot of things as I examined the unhelpful mindsets that I had been incorporating in my life. As I did that, I discovered not only was I creating an environment which was much more conducive to an education for my kids, a raising up of my kids to become who they were meant to be, but also I asked myself, why am I doing all the things that I'm doing? I can live like this too. I can live a life on purpose. I can enjoy my life as much as my homeschool kids. I can pursue interests that I have follow my rabbit trails, my curiosities. And so it turned out I learned a whole bunch more about me. And I started walking in a path that now is serving the homeschool community. I'm serving homeschool moms by walking alongside them. And it's really meaningful to me. I think every homeschool mom has an identity outside the homeschool mom role. We just don't always know it right in the thick of the homeschool days. And de-schooling helps us to live our lives on purpose as much as it helps our kids to hone in on who they are and what they're supposed to do with the rest of their lives. So join me in my session, Deschooling Your Homeschool to Live Your Life on Purpose, because isn't that what we all want to do? Join me. And also you can take the Deschool Your Homeschool Challenge to begin to incorporate some of these Deschool concepts into your homeschool. Hi, I'm Deborah Arbuthnot, author of the Homeschool Complete Elementary Curriculum. Our company supports homeschool families who want an all-in-one, ready-to-go curriculum. The Homeschool Complete Curriculum is written in a unit study format. A unit study focuses on a topic or theme and the skills and subject areas are integrated. Get your child excited about learning with a unit study. Have him choose a topic, get some related books from the library, and create a unit study that makes learning fun. I'll be leading two sessions during this conference, the benefits of a unit study approach to learning and how to create a unit study. If you're not convinced that a unit study is a great way to increase learning, visit my session that speaks about the benefits of a unit study approach. I'll discuss the reasons why a unit study is such a great way to teach. And now that you've decided that a unit study approach is the way to go, join my session on how to create a unit study. If you have never planned one before, it can be a bit overwhelming. Connect with the Homeschool Complete family on Facebook and Instagram, or read our Homeschool Complete blog for teaching ideas and encouragement throughout the year. All of the direct links are available on our website, homeschoolcomplete.com. If you have any questions about unit studies or any of our ready-to-go products, email us at info at homeschoolcomplete.com. If someone in the office doesn't have the answer, the email can be forwarded directly to me. Hi there, my name is Charlotte Jones and I live in sunny South Africa with my husband and neurodivergent twin boys. And I am a working homeschool mom coach. I've been on this journey since 2017. I know how overwhelming it can be and how it can feel like there's just no time to do anything. So it is my mission to support, to help women who work in homeschool or homeschool and work, to find more time, and more importantly, to welcome more joy and ease into their lives.
The number one thing that I've noticed working homeschool moms struggle with is time management. And I have a very powerful but very simple tip that you can use to help to manage your time better. And that is to be crystal clear about what your values and your priorities are. And I mean, write them down so that you know explicitly what they are and then use them as a metric when you decide how to spend your time. Because if you're spending your time on things that are not aligned, that are not serving you in any way, that are just giving and giving and giving, you are going to very quickly feel resentful. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to feel frazzled. You're going to feel like you're stretched too thin. So it's a really good idea to decide how, how to spend your time based on your values and your goals. And I think it's very important to put self-care at the top of that list because as working homeschool mom, self-care is a must-have. It is not a nice to have. So that is my tip. Write down your values and your goals, and then when you decide how to spend your time, use them as a metric. I'm so excited to be included in the Educate and Rejuvenate lineup this year, and my workshop is about how to find a homeschool schedule as a working homeschool mom. There are lots of practical steps to take to find a homeschool, homeschool schedule that works for you and your family, and knowing what your priorities are, knowing what your values are, is definitely one of those steps. But apart from that, there are also a lot of mindset shifts that have to happen when you start on a new adventure. And those are definitely also included in the workshop. And I hope by the end of it, you'll feel more confident that you will be able to find a schedule that's sustainable and that's enjoyable and that works perfectly for you and your family. I would love to connect with you online. You can find me at mylittlehomeschool.com. Be sure to sign up to my newsletter because I give out a free ebook every month. You could also find me at my podcast, the Strike a Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. And I'm most active on Instagram at Charlotte Jones 24 7. Can't wait to connect. I'm Erin Reeder. I'm founder of The Incremental Mama, which is a website where I help overwhelmed moms organize their lives and homes by implementing simple systems and routines that ultimately make space for them to enjoy what matters most. Because I really believe that it's not about huge, massive changes, but it's about small, incremental changes that have the power to make massive differences in your life. So I am all about easy, simple ways to keep your home clean and organized, tidy and organized, because it ultimately impacts how we feel in our home so much. So one of my top tips there that's super easy, and I love it because it like doesn't take any extra time, is called the one minute rule. Basically, if there's anything that can be done in less than a minute, that's like quick. So it can be, you know, two seconds, those things like just throwing away a piece of trash that's on the counter. Um, when you bring in the mail, actually like taking the 30 seconds to just go through it, get the junk mail in the trash and put the bills or whatever where they belong. Um, putting your shoes away when you take them off, hanging up the bag when you get in the door. Those simple things, just if anything takes under one minute, get in the habit of doing it right away. And you'll be amazed at, it doesn't take up hardly any time, but it absolutely starts to transform your space and make it so easy to stay on top of, top of messes because they just don't even build up. So if you're wanting more simple things that you can do to help you organize your life and home and just feel more order and feel like you're able to actually work towards your personal goals, I hope you'll join me in the four mindset shifts that will help you crush overwhelm and organize life and home. We're gonna be talking about four mindsets that keep us from our goals, that keep us from organization, even though we think they're helping us, they're not. Um, and what we can shift to instead that will help you in the time that you already have, start to transform your home, keep it more orderly, start to be able to work towards your personal goals and ultimately build the life that you want. So I really hope that you'll join me. And if you want to connect with me more and grab tons of resources to help you get organized and create routines, you can find me at theincrementalmama.com. 
Okay, if you loved what each of these speakers had to share today, be sure to grab your ticket to join us at Educate and Rejuvenate. It is going to be such a fun event. You're going to be inspired. You're going to get just that energy, that vibe you get when you attend an event. Because for me, whenever I go to an event, whether it's about teaching, whether it's about business, whether it's about self-improvement, no matter what, whenever I go, I get lots of ideas from the speakers themselves, like so many great ideas. But then it also, it's just like I'm taking that intentional space for myself. And I find that I get my own ideas and inspiration that maybe even weren't totally related to what somebody said, but it's just the energy and the vibe and the community. And that energy is real, even with a virtual event. So it's a great way to get that PD from your home. It's the honestly the cheapest teacher conference that I know of. And we are doing so much. We have life coaching, we have workouts, we have a yoga meditation, we have comedy with Joe Dabrowski and Christina Kuzmich. We are bringing it all to you so you can educate and rejuvenate this summer. So go to educateandrejuvenate.com to grab your ticket and I hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step, come grab your ticket to join me at Educate and Rejuvenate, the education event of the year on June 27th and 28th, 2023. This year, we have two incredible live keynotes, Joe Dombrowski, aka Mr. D, and best-selling author and video creator, Christina Kuzmich. We have over 60 incredible speakers speaking on topics such as math, language arts, reading, social emotional learning, classroom management, homeschooling and tackling burnout. We start the day with a workout together each morning. We have panels with the presenters and you'll even get to join live life coaching with me and even raise your hand if you would like to be coached. Plus, we give away tons of prizes throughout the event too. It is the best PD you could ever attend. And all of this is happening from the comfort of your own home. It's just $19 for a ticket and past attendees have said that this is what finally lit a fire under them to enjoy teaching again and that it was well worth every penny. Go to educateandrejuvenate.com to learn more about the 2023 event. Or if you're listening to this later, that link will show you what's up next as we will continue to do events like this. I hope to see you at Educate and Rejuvenate.